Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So last week we spoke about the hectic case of Anine Boyson and if you haven't seen that, I will link it somewhere up here for you. But once a month, I like to do one unsolved crime and that's gonna be today. So today we're gonna talk about the unsolved true crime story of Jacoba Schroeder and she may be better known as Bubble Schroeder. But if you would like to hear what happened and why this case is still unsolved today, then let's get into it. Intended for mature audiences only. Jacoba Bubble Schroeder was born on the 8th of June 1931 in Lichtenburg, South Africa. And this town is roughly about 1,300 kilometers away from Cape Town, which is about a 14 hour drive. But if you live in Johannesburg, Lichtenburg is around three hours drive away. But anyway, so back in the day, Lichtenburg was quite a popular mining area. And just like so many mining areas, there is a lot of wealth and there's also a lot of poverty. And this was one of those little towns. So now with a little backstory into Jacoba's background, basically her grandparents from her mother's side or her maternal grandparents were from German descent. So they came to South Africa in 1877 and her grandparents had a daughter named Louise. And Louise went on to meet and actually marry another German immigrant named Ernst. And he was, like I said, also had German ancestry and they married and had Jacoba. So during Jacoba's early childhood, her father was very much in and out of her life. He wasn't really there and he just kind of drank, left, came back, slept, went out and drank again until Jacoba was around four years old when he completely left the family. And sadly, Louise, who was Jacoba's mother, was kind of putting all the blame on Jacoba. And this may have been because obviously Jacoba's father had now left and maybe she was putting all the blame on Jacoba because now she's all alone with one child. She barely makes any money enough to support herself and now she has to support another person all by herself. But also there were rumors going around that Jacoba's mother, Louise, had a lot of responsibility at a very young age, but I'm not sure how old she was when she had Jacoba, but apparently she was quite young. So basically to survive, Louise would do the washing for very wealthy families in the mining area. Back in the day, it was quite a thing to not marry anywhere below your social level. So say you were middle class back then, you would never go below your class in society. So you could either go middle or higher, but never lower than middle. So with regards to Jacoba's nickname, Bubbles, the next part is a bit shady because there are some sources that seem credible, but I'm not sure as this case was is quite old. I wasn't there, so I'm not sure how accurate it was, but apparently Jacoba got her nickname from being very sweet and making very, very corny dad jokes. And they would just say she's very bubbly and that's how she got her nickname. There were also rumors that Jacoba got her nickname from the doctor that was there when her mother gave birth. And he said that as she was growing up and he watched her grow up, he said that she was so beautiful that when she smiled, her face would fill the room with more bubbles than in a sink, which I guess is kind of cute. But there is another reason as to why Jacoba had this nickname of bubbles. And I will get into that later on because it kind of you need to have a little bit of a backstory to that nickname so i'll save that one for later but those are some of the reasons or explanations as to why they called her bubbles so moving on when jacoba was around 17 years old this must have been in 1948 she decided to leave her mother's home and become her own woman and her own person some sources do say that this is mostly because the richer mining families had now left to johannesburg and she kind of wanted to follow this wealthier kind of society away but during the time that Jacoba was around 17, Lichtenberg had actually stopped mining. So there was no more income of that kind in the area. And obviously now Louise, Jacoba's mother, was starting to suffer because the richer families were moving out. They didn't need their ironing done anymore. So she was kind of out of work now. But Jacoba was having enough of this life and she wanted to move on from it. So she moved to Vereniging with her cousin and she started work there as a typist. And this was definitely just a means to her end, just to get her foot in the door. And while she was working, Working in for Inachin, she was sending a lot of money back to her mom as well. But whatever she didn't send to her mother, she would use for makeup. And obviously, a lot of women and men like to use makeup, and we use it maybe to enhance a feature or just to cover up something. You know, makeup can be used for anything nowadays. But for Jacoba, I think she was constantly being told how pretty she was and how beautiful she was. So I think when she bought this makeup, she was kind of trying to enhance her features and use 
what so many people were telling her as like kind of a way into a better life as well. So Jacoba had dreams of being a movie star, to be rich and famous and in lights, and obviously to marry a rich man as well. That never hurts. So of course, according to Jacoba's lifestyle that she was dreaming for, living in Lichtenberg in a little mining town was not going to be successful that way. And obviously she wanted more. And by moving to Joburg, that was where she was going to get her more. So Jacoba saved up every single cent that she could and she decided that she's going to move to Joburg and that was that. And she packed up everything and she left. And she actually did leave everything. She left her cousin behind. I don't think she told her mom for a little while, but obviously her mom eventually found out. But she was alone. She was still 17 years old. So she achieved everything from being a typist, being alone and earning nothing to now having enough money to move to Joburg. So like I said earlier, this is an older case. So there are some rumors that I obviously cannot confirm or deny. But it's apparently when Jacoba just left and moved to Joburg, she entered a pageant. And I would say that this is a beauty pageant, but it confuses me based on what they had to do. But anyway, this pageant was called Miss Legs Johannesburg. And it's not Miss Universe or Miss World, it's Miss Legs. So the first round that these women had to do was they had to stand behind a massive like sheet of cardboard and everything would be covered besides their legs. So they would stand behind this piece of cardboard and the people would judge based on their legs. And of course, our girl Jacoba had stunning legs. So she made it to round two. And in round two, they had to walk up this ramp around all the men that were staring and gawking at them. But they had to walk around this ramp and she had a cardboard like cut out around her head, like, a, like basically a brown paper bag she had over her face with just like little eye holes. And this was apparently because the judges did not want to get sidetracked by their faces. So they only wanted to see their legs. So basically that's what they had to do. And by walking around this ramp, Jacoba actually ended up winning this Miss Legs competition. And she received quite a bit of money from here, not a lot. And I know back in the day, there were obviously bars that were for men only. And I think women maybe had their sec like section. But anyway, so this competition, there were no women allowed at all in the building. The only women that were allowed in there were the contestants that were in the room. So while at this competition, Jacoba met a man named Philip, who was around 52 years old when they met. And Philip was a bookmaker. And basically, Philip would go around to all these high stake events and he would play bets and he would take the money for like whoever would win. So he would go to sporting events, horse racing, that kind of thing, and he would take bets and obviously the money and then they would gamble basically through Philip. But now, gambling back then in the 1940s, 1950s was not as easy as it is now. We can't just hop into our car, go to Grand West put some money into the machine and go on with our merry lives and do whatever we want to do. Basically, in South Africa, gambling was illegal up to 1994. So obviously, by Philip taking money, taking bets, gambling with these people in his high fidelity events, it was illegal. So he was not there doing legal bookkeeping, basically. But from what I kind of got from Philip and Jacoba's relationship was that it was very mutual. There was no like interest in any like sexual nature. They were just friends. But picture this. So we have Philip, which is our older gentleman with Jacoba. But basically with Jacoba out of the picture, Philip would go to all these high polluted events with a lot of different other wealthy men. So we have maybe five men sitting around a booth smoking puffs of smoke and these men would often have beautiful women around them and by their sides or serving them but back in the day having sexual relations outside of marriage is very taboo so that was a no-go and of course these very wealthy men would not want to force these beautiful women into any type of situation that they were not comfortable in but they also wanted their needs met so they would go to the next best thing which would be a prostitute but what was even more popular for this group of men was not just a prostitute, but mostly escorts, where they would be able to sit with them, dine with them, and then still kind of get a happy ending with the woman that they were with because they were not trying to pursue them or marry them. So why I tell you this is because apparently Philip was a pimp at the time and he was mostly described by people as a high class pimp. So eventually Philip invited Jacoba to move in with him and while they were living together he kind of slowly introduced her into using her beautiful looks 
to earn some money. And remember, Jacoba only wanted fame, fortune, and a rich husband. And obviously, Philip had kind of given her the fame and fortune with her look, but she still wanted this wealthy husband. So what Philip did was that he kind of kept on promising her, don't worry, I'll introduce you to really wealthy men as long as you do whatever I kind of tell you to do. So Jacoba apparently loved this idea. She was like, cool, I'm living in this nice house, you bringing rich men to me and we're earning some money on the side. So Philip organizes her some dates and she goes on dates like whenever Philip tells her that she has to. And in the beginning, Philip would always be with Jacoba. So wherever she would go, Philip would always take her there, maybe lurk around for a little bit and then drive her home as well. So basically these men would pay Philip to go out with Jacoba. And I doubt that Jacoba ever saw any money that Philip was getting for her time. And once Jacoba eventually got comfortable with Philip being around there for dates and supper, he eventually asked her and persuaded her to go to dance parties and like kind of late night activity kind of date. And at these parties it was said or it was rumored that Philip would ask Jacoba to kind of do dirty deeds with the men that she was on dates with. However, she would never sleep with the men. Philip had kind of created this persona around Jacoba that she would go out with men on very, very high stakes and expensive dates. However, she would never sleep with them, but you were still paying for her time. So she was never this bachelorette that you were going out with. She was basically an escort that you were going out with. But sadly, by the time Jacoba was around 18 years old, she was using alcohol as a vice. And this was particularly for dates that she never wanted to go on. And remember that I told you that I would come back to why people call Jacoba bubbles? Well, people would say that they wanted bubbles to come out. They didn't want this moody bubble, so she would use alcohol to try and kind of bring that personality and the bubbles that people loved out. But apparently the nickname Bubbles was coined by Philip who would say that he had this kind of power over beautiful young women to give oral sex anytime he commanded. And that is what he would call women who did that. He would kind of call them bubbles. So back to Jacoba and her drinking. Apparently her drinking brought out a very different side of her and I kind of get why in one sense because she was going through all of this. She didn't want to go on dates with these people but Philip was obviously forcing her to and she was uncomfortable. So she needed something to kind of fill that void. Her drinking became kind of uncontrollable and Philip was getting very, very pissy basically with her. And he said that she was becoming very violent whenever she drank. And eventually this caused a rift between Jacoba and Philip. It was also said that Jacoba really loved driving when she was drunk and often when she went out on dates with guys she would kind of force them to get out of the driving seat so that she could drive the car instead but obviously this couldn't have looked very good for philip who was trying to run a business through jacoba so he eventually said to her listen you're kind of ruining my business you need to pack up and get out basically so from the little money that philip actually gave jacoba she ended up moving out to an apartment and this was called dorchester mansions and this was in Rizik street in johannesburg so this building was first built by the south african government to house immigrants that were coming into south africa at the time and it eventually became a building not very well maintained and also became a place of very ill repute basically so jacoba actually was sharing a room with another lady at the time who was kind of also an escort at the time. On the 10th of August, 1949, Jacoba attended a party where she met a young man named Morris, who was around 21 years old. And he came from an extremely wealthy, wealthy family. And during the party, apparently Jacoba and Morris were really hitting off. They were flirting, they were drinking. They were just having a really good time. And apparently Jacoba even went to Morris's house that night. Maybe they just sat and had a chat, but she ended up going home the next morning. And when she eventually left, Morris ended up calling one of his friends named David, who was also 21 years old at the time, and he was also stinking rich. So Jacoba obviously wanted to see Morris again, and he was going to go to Dorchester Mansions where Jacoba lived. But because Morris had told David about what happened, David said that he wanted to meet this fine young lady. So he and Morris were going to meet Jacoba the next day. So the two guys and Jacoba were just kind of talking in the flat about about what they were going to do and they decided to go on a date that night. So Jacoba said that she would arrange for one of her friends to meet up with them and her name is Penny and she would go on a date with David. So after Morris and David left Jacoba's house before they were going to go out on a date later, Jacoba actually ended up going to Philip's house. Remember the pimp who we spoke about earlier? 
So she ended up going to his house and they were talking and I assumed that they were maybe talking about the night like that she was going on a date but they ended up drinking quite a lot and Jacoba actually ended up losing track of time and she was very very late for the date that she was supposed to go out on and she was also drinking so much that by the time she got back to Dorchester Mansions she was actually quite drunk and quite late and Morris and David were already there waiting for her. So now that Jacoba was obviously very late for her little date, she tried to calm everything down as much as she could when she got there. But also she noticed that she was already late and David and Morris were there alone and Penny was not there. She was kind of getting nervous because now she knew that she had to entertain both men on this date. But she obviously put her chin up and she walked back into the house put on a beautiful green dress, put some makeup on, and she walked back downstairs and said that she was ready. So the plan was to go back to David's house because David's parents were actually out and away in Durban because they had businesses there that they were running and David had the house all to himself. And also while David's parents were away, his younger cousin Hyman was also staying with him. So he was about a year younger than David, so around 20. And David, Morris and Jacoba got to David's house at around 8 o'clock that night. And as they were kind of pulling into his house, House, his cousin Hyman was leaving the house and David said to him listen where are you going why don't you stay with us and Hyman said that he actually is going out with his girlfriend that night so he promised her that he would take her out so David was like oh, fine I understand and Hyman went off to be with his girlfriend and it was just Morris and David alone in the house with Jacoba. Now apparently these three were like drinking like fishes Then the housekeeper of David's made them supper and they ate that together. And remember just the night before Morris and Jacoba were busy vibing and flirting with each other. But now when they were at David's house, apparently David and Jacoba were really hitting it off and flirting quite a lot. So after supper, Morris was actually like, you know what, I'm feeling like a third wheel. I'm actually just going to go home. So he ended up leaving after supper and left David and Jacoba by himself. So after Morris left, David and Jacoba went upstairs to David's room. And while they were in there, David actually said that they maybe had been there for about 15 minutes before Morris called and actually wanted to speak to Jacoba. And so David left Jacoba in the room speaking to Morris for around 15 minutes. And then eventually Jacoba called him and said, listen, Morris wants to talk to you. David picked up the phone and was talking to Morris. And all he said was, sorry I interrupted your evening, bye. But anyway, besides that, David's cousin Hyman ended up returning back to David's house at around midnight and he said that as Hyman walked into the door David kind of came running down the stairs and said to Hyman listen Jacoba's fallen asleep on my bed you need to go wake her up because I kind of don't want people expecting or assuming anything happened but basically David was so worried that she was going to pass out on the bed and not being able to wake up and David wanted Hyman to go and tell Jacoba that the party's over you need to actually leave now so Hyman was like okay fine I'll go upstairs so Hyman went upstairs to speak to Jacoba and when he got up there he said he walked into David's room and Jacoba was just sitting there and like she wasn't anywhere close to passing out at all. So he said to Jacoba, listen, you actually have to go home. And she said, fine, I'll go home as long as I can have one more brandy, which he ended up giving to her. So remember, Hyman came home at 12 o'clock roughly. And then around half past one in the morning, Jacoba said, okay, she's had enough now. She's ready to go home. So David obviously planned to drive her home. And as Jacoba left the house, she walked straight into a car and sat in one of the cars and apparently according to David and Hyman when she sat in the car and David said that that's the wrong car you need to get into my car apparently she had a hissy and wasn't gonna get out of the car she was refusing to move out of the car so because Jacoba was sitting in Hyman's car he said fine I will take her to Dorchester mansion and so Hyman got in the car and he was gonna drive Jacoba and apparently David said that when Hyman and Jacoba drove away, he could hear that apparently Jacoba said she wanted to drive and she was trying to force the wheel out of Hyman's hand. And around 20 minutes after they first left, Hyman returned home with Archacoba. And Hyman said that this woman is a lunatic, I'm not dealing with her anymore. Because she was demanding that she should be allowed to drive and Hyman said, no, you've drunk too much, let me just take you home. So apparently she wouldn't stop trying to pull this wheel and Hyman said, you actually need to get out of my car. So he dropped her off at a bus terminal and he left her. And apparently Hyman said to David that before she walked into this bus terminal, she turned around and said to Hyman, 
don't be surprised if you read about my corpse in the newspaper tomorrow. And apparently David was furious that Hyman had led her by herself, like in the middle of nowhere. So he got into his car to drive around to try and find her, obviously. So while all of this was going on, the morning before she actually went on a date with David and Morris, she actually invited her mom, Louise, to come and stay with her in Joburg. So the next morning when David had returned home because he couldn't find Jacoba at all, so he returned home to go sleep and Morris, remember, he left early. So he ended up going and driving to Dorchester Mansions to try and speak to Jacoba. And when he got there, all he saw was her mother because she had invited her mother over to Jacoba. So Morris asked Louise where Jacoba was and she said she hasn't seen her. She thought that maybe they had seen her. And Morris was like, no, the last time I saw her was last night. So Morris ended up calling David and saying, listen, Jacoba never got home, where is she? So at the time, David was actually at work and he left work to go to Dorchester Mansions to see if Jacoba was maybe there and she was just late. But obviously when he got there, she was still not there. So David, Morris and Louise ended up going to the police station to run a missing persons report. And the 18-year-old Jacoba Schroeder was officially missing for 30 hours before her body was later found. So Jacoba was found in Birdhaven Plantation, which had just been burnt for the new crop, and her body was found there. And this plantation is around five minutes away from where Hyman City dropped off, so it's less than a kilometer from where she was. And her body was around 30 meters from the main road. Her face was turned to the right, and her left leg was placed over her right leg, and her left arm was pressed up against her body and her right arm was stretched out on the ground at a 75 degree angle from her body. Her hat and shoes were both missing. The scene did seem to be staged because there were no drag marks, there were no footprints and also Jacoba's feet were perfectly clean so she had not been walking in this plantation. And police did assume that Jacoba had been murdered somewhere else because this area of road was very high traffic by people, by laborers, so people would have seen her like as soon as she was put there. They also noticed that Jacoba had very bad bruising on her neck. Police did notice that her bodice of her dress was slightly ripped. Her stockings were torn and the right side of her panties had been torn, but Jacoba had not been sexually assaulted. And doctors actually determined that Jacoba Schroeder was a virgin at the time of her death. And weirdly enough, the autopsy showed some kind of clay substance that was forced into her mouth. So it looked like someone had picked up clay that was near her body and pressed it into her mouth. And the doctor said that there were no signs of this substance in her lungs, so she was already dead when this clay was pushed into her mouth. And during the whole autopsy, the medical examiner actually found that Jacoba suffered from some type of disorder of the thymus gland, which actually caused her to have a really rare condition, which whenever you just squeezed her neck a little bit, she would actually pass out. And maybe by her having this enlarged thymus, was maybe a blessing in disguise because hopefully she just had a little bit of pressure to her neck before passing out and not having to experience such a long process. And the medical examiner did say that the time of her death was around 2 a.m. Jacoba's stomach contents confirmed the timeline that David, Morris and Hyman had given for the evening. And in Hyman and David's statements, they both agreed that Hyman had left the premises with Jacoba at Hoppus One in the morning and the bus terminus where Jacoba was allegedly dropped off was less than 500 meters from David's house. This meant that it would have taken less than five minutes for Jacoba, who was apparently enraged and wanted to drive, to force Hyman to pull over his car. Then apparently Hyman and Jacoba argued for another five minutes until eventually Jacoba stormed off and walked towards his bus terminal. But remember David said that Hyman was gone for at least 20 minutes. So if he had driven to the bus terminus, which was five minutes, and they had a fight, that was only 10 minutes together, plus minus. So he still had five minutes to get back home and five minute window to do whatever. But police were under an extreme amount of pressure to get this case sorted or to have some kind of suspect. So David and Hyman were both arrested. Hyman's bail was set at £5,000 and David's bail was set at £500. So it definitely shows you that Hyman was definitely the suspect in this case and David was maybe accessory after the fact. But the state's case between David and Hyman were completely circumstantial. There was absolutely no physical evidence left at the scene to point either men to the murder and there was nothing that they had at the house to point to any kind of physical altercation that had happened. But police obviously had theories as to what happened that night.
And one of their theories was that Jacoba and Hyman had obviously driven together and left the premises of David's house. And Hyman assumed that when he was leaving with Jacoba, he was going to have sex with her. And she declined. She got upset. So when she tried to run away, he got up and he strangled her with her scarf and then apparently carried her body to the plantation where she would be found 30 hours later. Now, when I think about this theory, obviously there are some inconsistencies, but the theory is possible. However, she was strangled from behind, according to the medical examiner. So if she was strangled from behind, that means that Hyman was driving and she was in the passenger seat, but then she must have pushed into the driver's seat. Hyman maybe got to the back and then strangled her from behind. But remember, the police also said that Birdhaven was a very high traffic area. So that means that someone would have seen it like maybe two, three hours later, why did it take 30 hours for her body to be seen? So it's possible that maybe Hyman did murder her and maybe he put her body in the boot and he came back later when the heat was happening and kind of just threw her body there to get rid of evidence. But also I assume the police must have checked the car and didn't see any hair or any clothing pieces still in his boots, so we don't know. But there was another theory put out by criminal journalists and they said that maybe Hyman and Jacoba did argue and actually Jacoba just got out of the car and walked and she eventually hitched a ride with a stranger and that stranger then killed her. And maybe the stranger then put this type of clay or lime into her throat to kind of throw off police. But David and Hyman, being very wealthy themselves, had one of the top lawyers in South Africa at the time. So obviously because most of this case was very circumstantial, David and Morris were acquitted of the murder of Jacoba and they were set free. And sadly, there was no further investigation into this case at all. And Jacoba Schroeder was buried in an unmarked pauper's grave in Benoni. And actually the three young men that were all involved or maybe not involved at all, went to live on and be actually very successful. Morris ended up taking over his dad's company in 1985. And in March 1999, when Morris was around 69 years old, then he was actually in court for another dispute that had happened for the death of, of his employees. And apparently one of his employees had found quite incriminating evidence about Morris and about him embezzling money from the business. And he was then apparently later found dead, shot in his car. But this had no effect on Morris's company and he was still successful. And he ended up passing away peacefully in 2014 at the age of 85. And in 2002, when David was roughly 74 years old, he was actually a multi-millionaire at the time and he was actually in court with regards to his wives and them wanting maintenance money for their marriage. So they all wanted roughly around 30,000 Rand. But basically David was a director of 12 different companies and he passed away four years later at the age of 78. And sadly, that is the end of the Jacoba Schroeder case. No one was ever convicted and this case I think is still cold and maybe closed even. But I hope that you found this case interesting and maybe let me know if you like or dislike unsolved true crime stories. Don't forget to subscribe and give that thumbs up a hit and I will see you again next week. Bye!